We're back on the morning zoo here at Phil 2019. I love this because there is, in fact, a, uh, a thing here that says banter. This is the part where we banter. <laughs> Hi, friends. Hey. hey. These are some of my favorite people because you made the new Windows terminal, and it's just a joy. Well, what thanks. did you think about the reaction to the video, Kayla? Because that video was pretty amazing. Someone was like, there's a Surface-style video, and it's advertising the text mode terminal. Yes. Yeah, it, the reaction was absolutely overwhelming. We didn't think it would get this many views this fast. I think we just crossed half a million on YouTube, and we're just freaking out. Were you just making it as a goof? Or like, were you like, we're going to do this, and it's going to capture the imagination of the world? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the idea of it was to be like a conceptual video of where we wanted the terminal to go, ideally by V1 at the end of the year. Yeah. So we want to make it look as great as possible. Yeah, and it was like, it's almost like it's inspirational and aspirational because now I'm trying to figure out what I can do to make my terminal look like the video. So now that that's an explicit goal mm -hmm. that you made, I, that makes me feel really happy. Yeah, absolutely. The first thing that I did when I got the terminal open was I just tried to make it look different just because I wanted it to be my own thing. Mm -hmm. Do you customize yours? Have you set yours up already? Oh, absolutely. The first thing I did when I installed it was create my own color theme. And Rich will probably get mad at me, but I prefer light theme over dark theme. Whereas team he's the light opposite. theme. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Completely a dark theme. A whole way. No, no. Everywhere. <laughs> space is heathen. Seriously. <laughs> You're going to dark light. theme in four spaces. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Come to the dark side. We've got cookies. So this is great, though, because one of the things, uh, one of my favorite features, in fact, was the ability not only to have dark theme versus light theme, but I actually like light theme for Windows, but dark theme for my terminal. So I have a right. user preferred theme, which uh, yep. I requested and happened, which is really cool because this is open source. Yes. So people can put their issues out on, on GitHub. This is actually, Rich, a, uh, an open source terminal. It is. We've, we've actually taken not just the terminal itself as well, but we've actually open sourced the entire Windows command line infrastructure as well. So the terminal application shares componentry with the, win with the traditional Windows console application that you all know and love today. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, we, we've essentially ta taken many of the components out of the console and shared them with the new terminal. So they're sitting on top of a common substrate, so a common renderer, common input stack, common VT parser, and those components are shared across both worlds. So if the community comes and helps us make an improvement, for example, in the VT parser, that will benefit the terminal, but also benefit the console as well. And if the, those, those changes are contributed to shared componentry, that code may end up coming back inside Windows as well. This has been a long road, right? I mean, yes. I, I assume that this isn't a thing where it was just <laughs> willpower. Like, it was, hey, you know, uh, we'll just make a new terminal. It feels to me like, if you recall, in the middle parts of Windows 10, the console, the, the classic console that yep. we think of, when you type in CMD EXE that runs Conhost, started improving. Yes. I noticed that my ANSI art, because yes. I have some, <laughs> You know, I remember my BBS that. looked a lot better on Windows 10. My door right. games started working better. Right. All of that, did all of that need to happen before we reached this, this point in the Windows terminal? It did, yeah. I mean, when the team first took over the console, it was 30-odd years old by that time. And no one had really owned it for about 26 years. And so the team essentially had to decompose and start understanding how this thing worked. And in the process of doing so, started to modernize and improve it. And some of the first improvements we made were adding VT support, so, so understanding virtual terminal sequences used by lots of Linux applications and Unix applications, bulletin boards and other things, to control styling and coloring in the console. And uh, that was one of the big, first big, really major and very visible improvements we made to the console. And we had to do that and then a bunch of other bits and pieces before we would be in a position to build a multi-tab terminal experience. When that new new console, the console before the Windows terminal yep. came out, we were internally at Microsoft self-hosting that. Yes. There, was a, there was a batch file, a very concerning batch <laughs> file that would basically install a bunch of stuff locally, including conhost.exe that usually lives down in C Windows Dungeon. Right. Da, 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 da. And uh, I thought to myself, I didn't know that we could have a different conhost.exe. Are you shipping those things self-contained within Windows terminal? Is there like the old terminal, the old console rather? exist and will exist, and they can live side by side. Yes, absolutely. But you can improve the console host. Absolutely. So the, the, the Windows console ships inside Windows itself. It's built as part of Windows. It will be built as and delivered within Windows for decades to come, because okay. its, its primary responsibility is backward compatibility. It's there to make sure that all your existing scripts and tools run as they always have and always will. Um, but the terminal gets to do new things. And in speedboating these new terminal capabilities, 
we need the con host infrastructure to be able to support that as well. And sometimes we might need to make some tweaks to con host to light up a new feature in the terminal. So the, the app package that contains the terminal application also contains its own private con host, essentially, for its own use, which might incorporate some, ch some changes that haven't yet made it into the, the mainstream uh, console within Windows itself. And one of the things that I wanted to be able to do, uh, Dustin, was to have uh, font ligatures, which are one of the other than taste tabs versus spaces, which we joked about a little bit, <laughs> is one of the most controversial things happening yeah, really in computer is. science today. Uh, maybe we can bring <laughs> up the, uh, the screen here, and we can find out how this group uh, feels about these things. Let's go ahead and pop up to my screen. I'm going to zoom in here. Ooh, this is my don't zoom prompt. Too hard. This is my prompt here. Notice that I'm actually hitting Control, Scroll. <laughs> And it's unlimited, by the way. You can go forever. <laughs> it's like a fractal. There's another prompt inside that zero. There is, yeah. And that's, it's actually it's my blood, that's actually my blood sugar in my prompt right there, that number. I had a cookie at Subway. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just type hyphen, hyphen, and then go like that. Yeah. So then there's two kinds of people in the world. There's people who like, ooh. And then people go, oh, no. What <laughs> was that hard? So, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of like the, uh, the Sagan quote, right? To, to bake an apple pie, first you have to create the universe. So <laughs> all we had to do was completely rewrite the text rendering engine. Hi. It's no big. <laughs> <laughs> so that's completely rewriting the text rendering engine. And speaking of that, if I go out here to DOS but not DOS and I type in dir slash s, I noticed that this runs at about 1,200 frames per second. <laughs> Approximately. <laughs> Give it a yeah. it's, it's fast. Like The intent was uh, someone had told me that uh, people figured out that if you used the original console host, and I'm not trying to badmouth the original console host, I'm hurt. if you wanted to make things faster, you would actually make it really small because it would output less text. And if you had a fast build, you would actually run that build smaller and it would go faster. All minimized. Yeah. All minimized. So if I make yeah, it minimized, that one may actually be fast. This one doesn't have to worry about that anymore, does it? It's just fast. It does it's not. Like GPU accelerated. Well, well, not only that, we actually took the, uh, took the text rendering out of the output pipeline altogether. Oh, interesting. So it can skip frames, for lack of a better word. Pretty much. OK. And that is also complete rewrite. This is a modern console for a modern universe here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But even, even that render is a shared component with the original console. So we're hoping to bring back into Windows that direct write render, hook it up to ConHost. Really? Yeah. Support so that you're going to take improvements server, and Windows you're going to bring it back and still be maintained backward compatibility. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So people using original console are going to have great experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Is that already happening? Because I've noticed some of the font things starting to light up in original console. Things that didn't work are starting to quietly work. You weren't <laughs> supposed to see that yet. <laughs> I, so, well, that's interesting. So uh, speaking of fonts, actually, one of the fonts that I'm excited about is this font. Let me go ahead. Can I go back here? I'm going to click Settings. And you sent me this font, Kayla, if I recall. <laughs> yep. So you're you're to, um, to blame for this. <laughs> I'm going to go here and say Format Document. This is the profile. Jason, this is my profile. Right? It's my, my, my place yep. to go and experiment. And I like that you, frankly, I like that you didn't make a UI on top of this. Yes. Right? Because, <laughs> because oh. if, non, if non technical parent gets here and they're concerned, well, they just walk away. Right? I don't know what happened. Just close the door and walk away. To, I, to your earlier point, there are two types of people there are people like the JSON config, and there are people like UI config. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I looked at this as a playground. The yeah. first thing I did when I got in here is I saw a cursor shape, and there was a choice that said vintage. <laughs> I'm old. I want a cool cursor. And so I got a cool underscore, and I made it Kermit Green the way the good Lord intended. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> and then you sent me. You were like, hey, what, try this font. What's the story behind this font? So, Cascadia code. Yeah, so we wanted to ship the new terminal, but we also wanted to have a new font with it because we thought it would have more impact. Because if we had regular, like a new terminal and had Consolas in it, I feel like it wouldn't have been as impactful than if we had a new font. So we went to a font designer and we said, we want a new font. It needs to be monospaced. And we also want to do ligatures. So can you help us out? And he came back with us. And this is hopefully going to be named Cascadia Code. Um, 
but it's still under uh, production. We still want to make some tweaks to some characters. So this is just kind of a sneak peek to the font for now. Mm. I appreciate that you gave me the sneak peek. I don't, <laughs> I'm, we're allowed to show that, right? It's too late now. It's too, it's too late, late now. now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and it'll be open source in its own repo eventually. You're going to open source the font? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We open source all the things. <laughs> That's cool. It's open by default now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, if, you, if you think you can stop us from open sourcing something. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oops, published it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah what are you going to do? Fire me? I'm the only one that knows how it works. Exactly. Well, you know, <laughs> once it's been open sourced, yeah, yeah. they fire you. You just get cloned. Yeah, I've already forked it, and I'm off running. <laughs> so another thing that makes me happy about fonts is that there were many times that I tried to get a thing called Powerline working. And Powerline is just when people have far too much time on their hands and they feel that their prompt isn't complicated enough. Yes. And I am that person. So oh, I know, that's pretty complicated. It, well, I wait till I add blood sugar. And I'm actually looking on doing, I'll talk about an idea I've got, actually. <laughs> this is my Ubuntu one here. And what's going on here? I'm going to zoom in. So this might look a little bit weird. So don't, don't think this is, this is perfect. So some of these lines will go away. But what is this thing, and how is it existing? This is a glyph or a Unicode thing, or what is going on there? Yeah, so this is. Powerline is a font extension. They took over a couple of the private use glyphs to put in, I think, two arrows and three Git-related things. It's like Symbols, the yeah. branch symbol and something yeah. else. So, yeah, so what? look at that right there. There's yeah, exactly. a, a really cool-looking um, path. Oh, hey. And then I've got a little pencil just chilling there to let me know that I've got some hey. edits and 75 of them. And that's kind of hanging out. Yeah, and so I can make that whatever I want. Yeah, but absolutely. The glyphs may or may not be into the font. So, like, I use right. Fira, F I R A, Fira code, which had the font, but maybe Cascadia code doesn't have it, or Scott code doesn't have it. I can modify that font and have my own stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a couple pretty popular font patchers. I think Nerd Fonts and the original Powerline SDK will just inject those characters into a font for you. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm interested, though, is I want to extend this. I want to do Really cool stuff. I love that the font's going to be open source. But like you notice here, I've got a little arrow showing my blood sugar. It's just gone from 120 to 123. Uh, what I really want there is a spark line. You know what a spark line is? <laughs> a spark line is a tiny graph that was invented by a guy named Edward Tufty. So now I'm trying to figure out how do I put something there, like an emoji or something? Well, you know, here. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you this. Can one you solve free. this? We can write it right now. So. <laughs> I can't solve this for you right now, but we've oh, got okay. an issue that's been floating around our GitHub for about two years now. Have you heard of Sixels? Sixels? Yeah. So I know someone, what voxels are. Someone devised a uh, kind of character grid-based pixel rendering system. And we do not support it. Okay. But it's been pretty highly upvoted. Everyone wants us to support Sixels eventually. Um, you could probably get your spark line with a little six by six. Interesting. Good. Don't make tricks. Thanks. Could I extend this in some way? How extensible? Can I have plugins? What if I have a what if I have a link like an mm -hmm. HTTP whatever that appears in a log file? I want to click on the thing. Can I do that? Why not? Maybe someday. Maybe not someday. Right you now. want to be able to <laughs> yeah. do those kind of things. One, I'm not trying to get you to like commit to something. Yeah. Well, in fact, we kind of previewed it. But I kind of do it, want you to commit yeah, to something. You put it in the video. It's in the video. Yeah. yeah. It's in the video. I did it. It did a command. Didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> well, yet. It's it's something we're planning it just on. It's just another one, right? Well, so yeah. here's the other thing that I think is going to happen, and this is why I think it's go so wonderful this is happening in 2019, yeah. is we can actually make uh, emoji-based <laughs> video games in, this is Pong emoji. Are those tacos? These are tacos. Is ta <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're a burrito I'm playing team. Pong with myself, with the, uh, uh, oh, uh, block, 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 block. Faster, faster. Yay. Oh. It's very complicated. <laughs> it's not a very good game. Uh, I'm losing to myself at that point, but it's possible. Yes. Like the, 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 the possibilities that this has opened up for, like the blood sugar thing might sound silly, but like I'm going to figure out what emojis or glyphs. I might actually modify a font on my own to make a glyph. I might take Cascadia code, mm -hmm. draw some extra glyphs, add those. I have suddenly a palette available to me that is amazing. We've yep. only got about 30 seconds left, but what I want to show is a couple things. In the tabs, I've got one style, one font, different color here. I've gone and extended this because you let me do it. I've got PowerShell. I've got Visual Studio PowerShell. I've got Ubuntu. I've got Cloud Shell. 
Even SSH into other places. Even SSH into other places. So people can watch for this uh, up on uh, GitHub slash yep. Microsoft slash Terminal. Terminal. Fantastic. Absolutely. Thanks so much for talking with me today. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right. I wish I could spend an hour talking about the Terminal, but we're going to go ahead and <laughs> head out, and we'll see you again soon.